Strange. So I need to agree. This is about the strange vibration. So there is a base. Okay. I can, it's better to put numbers here. Here I have N. So there is a structure that when n equals to one, you have l infinity. When n equals to infinity, you have a infinity. And, and it is interesting to study. So it's not clear how to call this structure. Okay, I don't know how to call it. Let me call it S. Structure S that depends on M. Mm -hmm. So S at one of one is L infinity. S of infinity is A infinity. So very natural thing would be one over N square expansion. Let me compare it with another thing that we have in mathematical physics. Compare with the spin J representation or dynamics. When J is one half, you know, I am putting here a notation or normalization coming from physics. J equals one half. It's the spin of electron. A very simple quantum system. When J equals infinity. It is classical mechanics on S2. One over J square expansion is the semi-classical expansion. So similar thing happen if you study chern simons theory. If you study chern simons theory, you have a nice classical theory for k equals infinity. It's theory of flat connections. If you have k equals one, it is uh, something like Ising model. And there are rational conformal theories in between. So this is something that we know. And here there is something new. So when I am explaining something new, I'm a bit frightened, okay? Because it could be stupid. But professor who said that it's an informal seminar when you, where you can share ideas. So uh, still, I think that it is kind of non-trivial. So uh, uh, similar ideas was uh, mentioned by Baranikov. And Baranikov was a, is a collaborator of Kansevich, if you know. So uh, Baranikov, Kansevich, so in particular, they uh, do different things like uh, WDVV from Hodge theory. So generalized complex structures 
that I called uh, Witten Gerasimov. I uh, always say Wit Witten Gerasimov. Baranikov Kansevich. So it's written 1994. Then Gerasimov explained it to me. And in particular, he explained that superpotential is the simplest example of this higher complex structure, generalized complex structures. So, but it was published formally in Baranikov Kansevich paper. So this is this Baranikov. So uh, he gave a talk when he was also thinking along this line. Okay. So if you are if so, if you are interested, it's where to look. I got it independently many years ago, and maybe some other people also got it independently. Okay. So the plan of my talk would be, first I speak about this, then about this, maybe I'll speculate about one over n square expansion. And uh, it looks a little like, uh, it, look, it looks a little like ADS CFT correspondence. Okay. So uh, I'm uh, sharing to you, I'm sure it's sharing with you uh, rough ideas because uh, when it's rough idea, you can uh, contribute, you see? When, it's, uh, when something is done, you can always say, oh, interesting, but we have no room to play with it, you see? <laughs> It's interesting to come to the place where a job is not done. Yeah. Because you can contribute and make your share and have your share. So it's kind of something venture. Okay. So I consider you as venture investors. You invest your time in uh, listening to me, in trying to understand, and maybe you can contribute and get some profit, you see. So, after these preliminaries, let me recall you what L infinity is. So, as everybody know, L infinity is a homological vector field expanded at its zero. And here I want to say that Shi Li, of course, has uh, told me like six years or seven years ago, uh, the idea of interesting duality. Suppose we have a super manifold. By the way, uh, I want to say that I like this idea because it was also, I also had this idea, but I have not published it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Shi Li told it to me, so, so Shelley should trust me that I also had this idea before. No problem. Okay. Yeah. So, so here is the super manifold. Okay. And homological vector field is a differentiation of super manifold that squares to zero. And uh, 
This construction is also called Q manifold. Here's a combination of uh, two schools, French school. In French school, people consider formal supermanifolds, formal theories in even and odd varieties, together with differential. In Russian school, so when I say French school, basically Bourbaki at all. In Russian school, it is Berezin at all. People consider super manifold as a global object, forgetting to equip it with the homological vector field. Okay? So, uh, as I always say, uh, I'm trying to take best from both East and West, but it's not me. It was uh, Schwartz and Kansevich. Schwartz is Albert Solomonovich Schwartz and Maxim Kansevich. That in the work around this, so it was called AKSZ. So here is Kansevich Schwartz. And these are their students, but it's called AKSZ, but you should probably concentrate on the middle part. Said that infinity structures appearing here actually actually come from super manifold equipped with homological vector field. So this has advantages of these two approaches. It puts these approaches together. Okay? And uh, here is time to mention idea of Shelley. That also was my idea, but I never published. Okay. If you have homological vector field, it typically has several zeros. So there is the expansion of the vector field at one zero. And it would bring you, say, L infinity structure. One. You can also expand it at another zero. You will have L infinity structure two. However, these two are just two different expansions of the same vector field that we assume to be analytical. Mm -hmm. And one may think that these two expansions actually mean dual theories. And uh, this duality resembles pretty much what people are calling string duality. Mm -hmm. Because in string duality, this super manifold is actually the super manifold of vacua, of string vacua. In particular, it could be moduli of Keller structures. It could be moduli of complex structures, but uh, you, 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 you should also include string complex constant. And uh, the, therefore, it would be vacua of what? It would be vacua of, uh, of M theory. So, general vacua of M theory 
has no good geometrical description. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we can go to different corners. If we go to one corner, we will have an infinity structure L1. If we go to another corner, we will get L infinity structure L2. They are structures in different uh, coordinates, you see? You see, vector field the coordinates here a priori have nothing to do with coordinates here. However, sometimes there is a connection that transports co distinguished coordinates here to coordinates here, but it's an extra structure. Yes. But before, let me talk uh, in the case where there is no extra structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there is no extra structure, we have two different uh, descriptions of, of something. What is interesting is it is possible to think about L infinity in terms of graphs, at least trees. So we have trees here, and here we have another tree. Okay? So somehow these two things have different trees. So I would say different space with different particles. And this is, uh, and this seems to be exactly the model of what we have in M theory. In one corner, we have one space with one set of extended objects. In another corner, we have another space with another set of external ob extended objects, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, so-called U-duality of M theory means that they are related. They are expansions of the same object. Okay? So uh, here, uh, here I'm coming to the main problem of M theory. Hmm. So for me, the main problem of, of M theory is that we, we have some idea of what M theory is. And the main problem is uh, that we consider M theory as something unique. And uh, if it is unique, uh, it's a pity. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it means that you either should understand it as a whole, or you have no chance to understand it at all. OK? Mm -hmm. So it's a pity because it contradicts philosophy that uh, each phenomena depends on parameters. And you should always go to the place where uh, parameters uh, make it simpler and simpler until it becomes. Uh, so I think in the English word is tame. Okay. So tame means uh, that it's like a pet. So maybe you know that I have a cat. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can study cats and play with cats because they are small and tame, okay? So maybe I am interested in tigers, but it's too expensive to keep tiger and it's too dangerous to deal with tiger, you see? Tiger can kill you in a second, being in the bad mood, you see? So cat cannot kill you. But cat is basically the same tiger. They are not that different. So if you wish to study cats in general, or if you wish to study tigers, the main thing that you should know is that tigers can come in families. Tigers belong to cats in general. <laughs> and uh, there is 
a, a, a cat that you can study and that you can play with. Okay? So M theory as it is looks like a tiger. Okay? And we want to see a cat. So the main problem of M theory is not that it is very complicated. The main problem is that we don't see the line of M theory simplified until it just disappear. So today I gave a lecture and I told my philosophy how to study things. You have a fact here. So it's a real world. It could be not a real world. It could be an imaginary world. But you want to study this problem. So you need to put your problem in the line of worlds that become more and more complicated. So complication. Complication. And then This phenomenon degenerates somewhere. If you have a world that consists of only one point, you cannot see all mathematics here. You can see something, but not all mathematics. Things are uh, mixed together. But you should come to the model that is uh, complicated enough to, to exhibit this effect but it is simple enough to allow its computation, okay? And the uh, philosophy of mathematical physics means that if you have an effect, you put it in family, and then you have this threshold. Oh, I cannot write this threshold. Uh, I'm not good in English spelling. Th threshold? where effect just appears. And here you could get a lot on this. And this is the method of mathematical physics. Put everything uh, as a function of parameters, study the threshold phenomena. Okay? Now, for, for some reason, oh, I have antivirus here. So for some reason, we like to study M theory. So XZ is basically classical, right? Classical theory. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, I, I'll come to this. Yes, AKZ is classical. So being classical is just one parameter, one of the parameters. So if you study theories, if it's reasonable to study its classical limit, study its uh, classical limit. So people like to study M theory. Okay? As uh, we know, it is uh, so one of the approaches is just to put epsilon deformation and get a topological theory out of it. It's a deformation. It's not that you want to study. But uh, it, this deformation is also simplification. Actually, because cohomology of a double complex are smaller than the, than the cohomology of the first differential. I can comment on this, but it's not what I'm going to, go, I'm going to say. You see, I am giving you a section zero, but... Uh, you see, since we have Chile, I want to advertise his idea. Yeah, that's, uh, so idea of Chile. By the way, this uh, this uh, this, uh, this uh, additional connection actually yeah, plays an interesting role, like in understanding the analog of um, Kronish theory for this BV like quantization, like um, you know, this uh, uh, basically the obstruction theory. I was trying to understand this obstruction theory in BV <clears throat> in terms of the traditional Quranishi. And uh, you will find these connections and so on. 
but, but, but I never published this idea. I mean, this is, I have some notes, but I never published this. So the same. Okay. Idea. So, uh, so you see, uh, so please do not follow my example by not publishing things. So there is an ultimate person called Anton Gerasimov who has so many ideas uh, that he, but he is not publishing them. So for him, it was enough to find me all days, take me by a button, share some of his ideas and go away. And he is satisfied. So it's, uh, <laughs> so you should not, so you should not do like this. Okay. Yeah. So uh, even if you are satisfied, note that your ideas uh, uh, could be useful to other people. So publishing ideas is not just to keep your reputation high. So everybody knows you. Publishing ideas means sharing it with yeah. other people. So uh, you should not sit on it. You should, you should uh, discuss them, you should communicate. And even if your idea looks crazy, you see, to be crazy, it's a necessary condition to be non-trivial. Mm -hmm. If your idea is not crazy enough, it, it is not a discovery. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, I, 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 I explain this to many people. Uh, it seems like people- Okay, uh, but uh, you see, uh, so one second, I, I just want to, to take some uh, water. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can I can put uh, my notes here. Uh, so, so let me let me quote Landau. I always uh, you see remind Landau. Somebody told Landau that he, the person who was speaking to Landau, told him that he uh, found, that he discovered Schrodinger equation, by, but didn't consider it important, and that's why that didn't publish. Landau replied immediately that a wise person could not discover Schrodinger equation, it's normal, but to discover the Schrodinger equation and don't understand it's important, you have to be a complete idiot. <laughs> okay? So, uh, so if you have a crazy idea, but you think that it is important, please publish it somehow. Please share it. You see, I'm not doing it many times. Okay, I'm keeping idea, ideas. So reaction of society is, if you found a crazy idea, please be brave enough to publish it, and not only to publish it and sit quietly, hoping that nobody would mention it. Okay, but later on you can say, ah, I published it. You should uh, be brave to defend the crazy idea, to openly speak about it, to get critics, it's a risk. People could show you that you are a complete idiot. Mm -hmm. Like uh, great uh, Professor Young, <laughs> who was criticized for his discovery of Young Mills by Pauli, very strong. But uh, so it was fruitful. Would Professor Young hide this? Like, uh, so there was a Japanese uh, physicist who did it, invented it at the same time. I forgot his name. Uh, you will be, okay, punished by history. You will not be this great young, okay? And then you'll, uh, you'll write a book like this Japanese physicist wrote called uh, Missed Opportunities. the story how he invented Young Mill's theory, 
but uh, was lazy to publish it uh, because he was traveling along United States after the Second World War, and he was he wanted to have some relaxation after the post-war Japan, and he had something that he wanted to publish just to report what he was done uh, that he was doing in the United States. Suddenly, he got the first paper of Young Mills. And then he got the second person. He was always late. So finally, he wrote a book, Missed Opportunity. So it was good to read this book, not in order to follow it, you see, not in order to give him credit, just in order not to do as he was doing, but to do as Professor Young was doing. Taking a lot of critics on himself and no. finally becoming a winner. Yeah, like a free series. It's, it was actually uh, expanded by Euler, but he didn't uh, think that uh, free act series uh, express functions completely. Okay. So, okay, so you have, so it's just, so still uh, you may say that it's outside of the topic, but uh, you see science is like a real life. It has many faces, you see? Mm. Okay, so here, so the main problem of M theory is the lack of models, okay? Is the lack of cats and Somehow, Shiri and me unpublished independently discovered this model and did not study it in some detail. Let me tell you another model. That is a great uh, application of AKSZ. We will come to AKSZ and applications. The great thing is so. So there are two. There are several things in AKZ. Mm. One of the things in AKZ is that you go from linear structure. So complexes are linear. We have complexes, differential there. These are linear structures. Supermanifolds and differentiations are nonlinear. Yes. <clears throat> so when uh, Chevalier published his complex. He described it term by term, yeah. okay? So he was not thinking that, uh, that uh, his uh, super ring has an interesting spectrum, okay? Well, this uh, seems a natural generation of drum complex. Yes, but he was not thinking, Chevalier at that moment was not thinking uh, uh, of uh, his uh, complex as a uh, super commutative ring right. with the Q structure. So we understood, we understood it much later. Okay. So, <clears throat> so actually, you see Russians with these super manifolds and French peoples with these differentials. Now it's possible to have a global object and duality. I'll come back to this in a moment. Because now I, I want to share with you some other uh, cats of M theory. Well, let me give you another mathematical problem, okay? Another mathematical setting that has similar duality. So unfortunately, Shili left, but. So we should not wait for him. So, yeah. so it is the following. So let us consider the following simple problem. Suppose we have the equation. Okay. So we study exact solution at school. But now 
let us consider, let us take this equation. It has two rules, yes? And consider here, not A, but epsilon. Then you have a solution that is X equals minus C over B for epsilon equal to zero. Plus epsilon to the K and some function of what? Of B and C. So do you know this function? So it's better. So you see, I don't even know. So, okay, let me call it F. Do you know this function? What is interesting is that you can write such function when whenever B is not zero. You'll say, come on, it's easy. Let us take a solution. Let us expand this solution. You see, I, do, I don't remember the formula, but, and you'll get this. By the way, this solution would have the following form. It would be something like C, B to the power K, and here there are interesting numbers. Do you know what are these numbers? You can compute them from the exact solution. But do you know that these numbers uh, have interesting combinatorical life? Who knows what these numbers are? Hmm? So nobody knows. These numbers are Catalana numbers. And these Catalana numbers have 61 combinatorical combinatorical models. So there were 60, so, uh, and uh, I'm quoting a book. So who, somebody wrote com combinatorical theory, I forgot his name. Very well-known mathematician, I'll find it. So this Catalana, maybe Catalana is written like this. So one from this 61 understanding of Catalana numbers is the number of a rooted a ribbon three valent trees. Ah. It turns out to write down this formula, you do not need to differentiate the well-known solutions for square equation. What you have to do is you, you, you need to, to sum uh, trees. And uh, this is uh, actually a theory, theory of, I think, I think it was fogged. It's called formal resolutions. Like 60s. Okay. Now, there is, there is a combinatorical proof that these numbers, that this solves quadratic equation. And the proof goes as follows. It's very instructive proof. Suppose you have a tree rooted. 
you can cut it here and you get two trees. Okay? So that's why the rooted trees are uh, trees that could be cut and that could not be cut. So number of the rooted trees satisfies the equation. It is something like one, if you cannot cut it, and we call this B minus one. You know how we call it being physicist? We call it propagator. So there are threes with propagator and threes without propagator. The only three without propagator is this one. So the number of trees is one for three without propagator. And there are threes with propagator. So I think it's like this. So, uh, yes, and, and if you cut it here, you get three and three. So you have something like this. So this is a symbolic way to understand why this series solves quadratic equation. You number trees. So all rooted three valent trees consist of irreducible plus this. And of course, I have number n of epsilon. So I am counting trees with generating parameter corresponding to the vertex. Okay. That's how I get it. Okay. And you can check that it is exactly the quadratic equation that I have. Now, do you know how to solve equation? Do you know how to solve general equation? Okay. Say of order five. Okay. Where you do not have analytic solution. Hmm? Huh? My favorite example. You cannot solve it exactly, but you can solve it perturbatively in the same way. So here you will get generalization of Catalano numbers. You will just have not trivalent, but roots with higher valency. Okay? So compute the number of all threes of this type. It is n of epsilon. Use the same trick of cutting it here. And you will get that n of epsilon is one plus epsilon n of epsilon to the power k okay, five or k or whatever. So this is combinatorical solution to the algebraic equation like this. Moreover, you can go further. You see, I, I will also not publish this. But uh, I, I think now it's a proper time to talk. You see, I am so uh, so. Uh, please excuse uh, my deviation from the topic because I do consider it important. Okay. Let us consider the following equation: epsilon two x squared plus epsilon three x cubed plus etc plus bx plus c equal to zero. So the small n, I am not going to take large n with it. Now consider perturb perturbative solution. So perturbative solution to this equation 
is the counting of trees with all possible valences. You put here, say, epsilon 3, and here we put epsilon 4, and here we put epsilon 4, and here we put epsilon 3, and somewhere here we put epsilon 2, OK? You count the number of these trees weighted like this. And there is n of epsilon. And this n of epsilon Due, due to the same trick, solve this equation. Epsilon k n of epsilon to the power k. So sum over k. Sorry. And so, so number of solution is n of epsilon. And I want to say that, sorry, I'm, that epsilon k, n of epsilon to the power k plus bx plus c equals to zero. So n of epsilon solves universal algebraic equation. So while we do not know how to solve universal algebraic equation, we still know how to, sto how to solve it perturbatively. And the sum is given in terms of trees, OK? Now, it's good that Shelly is back. Because now an interesting question comes. It's exactly a question of Shelly. We know that such equation has not only one solution, but n solutions, right? At least quadratic equation has two solutions. OK? So where is the second solution? First solution that has combinatorical description is perturbative. But there is another solution, x non-perturbative, that goes like 1 over epsilon. OK? Yes. And by looking at this solution, we somehow ignore this non perturbative solution. OK? Now, what can we do? Let us do duality. You see, here, here we have the same space, similar space to what Chile was proposing. Here we have the family of algebraic equation. OK? And here we are in the vicinity of very special solution. OK? And we know how to describe solutions around. At the same time, we can go to another region in the space of coefficients. Because actually, coefficients a are a n x to the n plus c equals to 0. We can go near another solution and study behavior there. And we will have another tree. OK? But we can analytically continue from one place to another place. 
Am perturbative solution. Would go to non-perturbative solution. And this is the Galois group of symmetric group. Okay? Sorry. It's the Galois group of this equation, and it's known to be a symmetric group. So it is Galois group that turns you something perturbative into something non-perturbative. And this looks awfully similar to what we have in M theory. So I was sitting on this model for 16 years. Now, when I saw Shelley, and he is not publishing his duality, I would also like to show similar duality. But these are trees. What is interesting is that, is that these trees do have quantum and quantum analog. Okay? And we know it. So quantum analog of this phenomena is Shili. Could you guess what is the quantum analog of this? Uh, this one? Yes, of this phenomena. You mean for this duality? Yes. Let me take a look. Mm. Oscillating integral. But I, I'm thinking that the, the connection in uh, to at the infinity, I mean, to h bar, large h bar. Yes, you see here. You see, this is algebraic. So consider this model. Yes, yes. It is, it is a one by one. It's in, so what is interesting here? That is that this looks like one by one matrix model. Okay. Yes. However, if you expand this integral you could go close to the classical solution. And classical solutions are given by the sum of trees. And quantum corrections would give you loops. <clears throat> so here, this would be equal to So let us call this polynomial P. P of X classical. So it, is, so it will be the leading, the leading result of the integral. Plus, you will have h to the, I don't know, to the L correction and another polynomial. And we know from Feynman diagram theory that these polynomials would have loops. So one loop phenomena would be something like C is sitting here, B is, B is, B is, B is absolute. Okay. And this is also a counting, a, a counting number. And here you are counting. So it's interesting what you are actually counting here. So uh, basically it depends how you, how you consider it. You may count ribbon graphs or you may count graphs. So there are some peculiarities. Okay. But that's it. So the theory of these integrals is in some limit. When you come close to the critical point, it gives you some of Feynman diagrams. When you go to another critical point, it gives you another sum of Feynman diagrams. In between, it gives you something. So it's exactly, so I propose this as a model of M theory. It's like a cat. In some sense, we have particle theory at one critical point. So these A's are nothing. So there are, ana there are analogous to parameterization of the moduli space of M theory. 
You have this general integral, I don't know what to do with it. Okay? But when, if you adjust these A's to some critical place, just like people do in matrix models, you would either get diagrams that describe, okay, you may say particles, you may say strings, okay? Please note that I don't have large M here. Because I do not need to. I can modify, but at the moment I do it like this. So I have kind of dualities in particle theory. And the group of dualities is a Goulart group. Together with quantum phenomena. Mm -hmm. To tell you the truth, exactly the same model is applicable to Jacobian conjecture. Maybe you have heard about Jacobian. So Jacobian conjecture says that if you have some condition here, the formal theory that you have here turns out to be a polynomial. Maybe you know it. Maybe if you are interested, I could uh, explain it. It's a well-known statement. So there is Jacobian conjecture and there is Hesch oh, I'm sorry, this is Hessian conjecture. In this form, it's called Hessian conjecture. It's for this integral. So Jacobian conjecture is for this type of integral. So if you are interested, I could uh, report this on the seminar. You see, you'll get uh, not million dollar, but you'll get a lot of respect if you can prove Jacobian conjecture. Okay, I'm also interested in money, but I'm not a mathematician. So mathematician, some mathematicians are just solving problems like at the Olympians. Who can solve the hardest problem? Okay, I am not like this. I'm a mathematical physicist. So it means that I want to understand the relations between phenomena in nature, okay? Yeah. That's why I like she leaves problem very much and I see kind of similarity. Okay? So I explained what could be a cat of M theory, okay? Mm -hmm. The toy model that has Many interesting things. You see, here we have one over h. You know that if you readjust parameters, this, this h uh, could be involved in this business. So you may ask if this involves h or not. Okay. So is it? Uh, uh, so does it geometrize the string coupling? Sorry, the particle coupling. This is the model. This is my cat. I want to understand tiger by understanding this cat. By the way, exactly this cat is studied in QOG Saito theory. Moreover, exactly this cat was studied by Joshua Fark. Yes. Okay. And his binary algebra theory. You see, it actually doesn't matter that here I integrate over polynomials. I could integrate over algebra of polyvectors. As Chili definitely knows. Yes, you know it, right? Mm -hmm. So this is just particular case of polyvector, or put it differently. Pulley vector is just a particular case of uh, supercommutative algebra. Actually, uh, I, I find this idea of this connection by trying to understand the work of J. Su Park as well. Yeah. Yes, so we, we can discuss it sometime. Yeah. By, but actually, if you just think, 
Yes. What we are studying, or what you saw, Joey so far. So I should also pronounce him properly because uh, Korean people are special. Each third of them has name park. So <laughs> you see a park, but it has no almost no meaning because it's just like Mr. or Miss or or something, you see. Okay, so you have to say Josue and uh, yeah. and it's kind of important. By the way, in China, uh, in China culture, Li, there are a lot of Li. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, it's how I understand uh, the Chinese proverb that the walk, you know, walk of 1000 Li starts from the first step. I always say the walk of 1000 Li starts from the first Li. You see, I put it this way. So for me, China is 1,000 Li. Different than me. Okay. Yeah, of course, okay. So, <laughs> so could I make a, a joke out of this proverb, okay? Okay. okay. So, for me, China, so for me, China is a road of 1,000 Li. Since I'm meeting Li one by one, you see? <laughs> okay. So we okay. should uh, we, we pause okay. the discussion. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So so now after this preliminary discussion, it's a point zero. So I commented this remark of film. I said that I have something similar, and it's interesting to study it because later on I will come to matrix models of this type again. Okay. Mm -hmm. in the so-called final geometry. Uh, well, actually, uh, what is the color group in this case? What is what? Uh, color group, you said is duality, just, but how to construct this oh, color group? Galois group. Yes. So Galois group for one polynomial seems to be symmetric group. Yes. <laughs> And this is duality group. It interchanges. So if you analytically continue, and you can analytically continue for the for the simplest cases, and uh, basically the solution should be analytical function. It is not written in radicals, but it is a function. It doesn't have uh, essential singularity. So if you analytically continue. It's just what you are doing when you are studying mirror phenomena. You interchange perturbative root with non-perturbative. Hmm? So it is similar to what you are doing when you are doing mirror symmetry. When you are doing mirror symmetry, you are going from one geometrical point to another geometrical point, and you interchange a Keller moduli with the complex structure modular. So it looks like, it look, for me, it looks like a bit, either interchanging perturbative root with non-perturbative or interchanging, uh, say, D brains with the fundamental brains, okay? So uh, I would like to study this model in more detail. And of course, I am inviting, you see, that's why, as Professor who said, it is a discussion seminar. We put here ideas, we put here crazy ideas, we invite people to discuss. This is the model that I have. This is the model that Shili has, but not published. It's interesting to see relations between them, dualities here and there. By the way, this polynomial is the generalized Q-manifold. Let me tell you why, if you don't know it. It is because Q-manifolds that have a homological, so Q-manifolds that have a homological uh, vector fields, are generalized to BV manifolds. 
So in BV manifolds, you have what? You have a poly vector that solves master equation. So this polynomial is what? This polynomial is zero vector function that automatically satisfies master equation, mm -hmm. right? So she knows superpotential, so she knows there is no condition on superpotential. Now, she leaves model with the vector field. Is another example. Take a vector field that solves master equation. That looks as, Q, as being Q-manifold. So you have restriction. Here you have no restriction. Here you do have restriction. And do the same thing. Don't you see that this and this are particular cases of the same structure? Replacing vector fields by function. So I address to Philly. What do you think? Actually, there's a. I have a different view on this relations of these two. That um, actually the uh, the oscillator integral is a model for this BV, but the the BV actually uh, can be viewed as a special example of L in structures with flat connections. Actually, that's okay. a. Okay, so you can generalize further, but uh, I am not talking about generalization. I am just proposing you to see this example and your example as two particular cases of the same structure mm -hmm. that may be generalized even more. But what is good here is that here we know the duality group. And here, we need to find it. Mm -hmm. Duality here is other control. Duality here is much more mysterious. Here, the formation space is free. No relations on coefficients. Here, the formation space is restricted by equation. Somehow, this equation may be solved if you make a symplectomorphism mm -hmm. that makes uh, the vector field a function because it depends on polarization. Mm -hmm. So here I just give you some ideas why these two things are very closely related. Okay. And this is a global theory. And here, I don't think that you have you have uh, idea of global theory, but uh, it's maybe not very constructive. So by making functions of several variables into vector fields would give examples of your analytical continuation. Do you understand what I mean? Okay, maybe other people don't understand. She really definitely understand. How to take function into vector field? So say you have, suppose you have x1, x2, okay? It seems to be a function of two variables, right? But, it, but we consider this function in the space with coordinates x1, x2, x, x1 star, x2 star. So this is Lagrangian manifold here, right? Now, let us consider another Lagrangian manifold. Let us say that now coordinates would be x1 and x2 star. So, so this I called y1 and this I call y2. Okay? It is symplectomorphism. I keep symplectic structure. 
That's why in this way, the function x1, x2 goes where? It goes to a vector field, y1, y2 star. So this is a vector field. This is a function. The image of the function is a vector field. Vector fields that you are getting by this process are homological by construction. So this is a way how to create a homological vector fields, at least a lot of them. So if here you have a family of functions, you do this transformation and you have a family of homological vector fields, okay? And if here you have some kind of duality, you also have it here. So I'm trying to explain that model, stupid model of functions, of potentials, etc. The time promoting and more complicated model of uh, Shelley could be related by this transformation. Hmm? Hmm. You see? So I am not uh, contradicting, I am helping, you see? Yeah. I'm helping you to construct models. Yeah. Okay, so please, I need to have a two minutes break. Yeah. Okay? okay? So please wait for me because now I'm going to come to the topic. And this topic would be topic about infinity algebras. Just <laughs> please wait a moment. I think I described the section number zero quite completely. And I hope you consider it interesting, Provo provocative, contradictional. <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> Yeah, I can share my notes on this, uh, this stuff. Uh, what was you gave you the notes? Ah, my notes. Uh, no. 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 然后它就是就像通常的伏击核一样，它有一个它有个modular space，它通smooth的话当然很好，如果singular的话就会就会有一些结构，Cronach theory。对，然后这个东西可以通过那flag connection 来来研究。我当时是为了写这个，后来我没publish的原因是后来我就没我没有时间接着写。好。By the way, okay, I'm back. By the way, now I have a very definite proposal. So we with Shi Li were, were doing uh, the same mistake. Sitting, not publishing, <laughs> the crazy looking model. Now I realized, so I had not realized it before I started this talk. I realized it during this talk. Hmm. That this is the same model. I actually wanted only only explain Shi Li's model. But while I was explain, explaining it, I found this, uh, mm -hmm. I found this uh, somehow resolution, okay? Mm -hmm. So how to solve an infinity equation having this? And, uh, and all together, it, uh, it makes a paper. Yeah. So you know, some people say uh, at some uh, unpredictable moment, I'd like to marry you. No, Shili, I don't want to marry you. I am proposing you to join your stuff with this stuff yeah. and write a joint paper. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm sending you the. I want to. I want to connect this to. Uh, let me. Let me. Let me put this uh, stuff here. <laughs> okay. So I think you're right. This is um... so I have something that uh, would uh, 
enlarge your theory. When uh, I'll read your stuff, it will bring something here. All together, it makes a nice story. Yes, <laughs> I totally agree. So it looks like a Hollywood movie, you see? <laughs> so actually, you may think that we planned, that I planned this in advance, you see? To tell uh, Shili, uh, okay, be my scientific wife. At least somebody has to step up first, you see? <laughs> <laughs> So here is my issue. Well, what to say? It's an explanation of scientific love. Okay. <laughs> so after you explain that you scientifically love somebody, you, you propose to write a joint paper, you see? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it, is, so it is the end of story zero. Now let us come to story one. Okay. So now let me consider perturbated aspects of L well infinity. So before, so here I explained non perturbative. Now let me explain perturbative aspects of L infinity. That L infinity, if you expand it in local coordinate, is a set of operation. You have an inverse like this. And you have operation, you see, this is M4. Okay, and condition being a homological, being an expansion, okay, I would say, being a, part, a localization at zero homological vector field. brings equations on these ends, okay? I will call it quadratic equation. You may easily write it down, but it's, but it's better to draw it geometrically. And this is not a propagator. It's just contraction of the output into input. Okay? And this is equivalent to classical master equation. This is, these are all the same. So it's called L because somehow people started this business. So here it's, I'm telling the standard thing, because people started from M2. So for M2, it means it would be condition, this condition would be Jacobi equation. However, we should work not with Jacobi equation, but with super Jacobi equation. <clears throat> And that's why uh, we will have, we can have natural operation like M1. It's kind of differential. So actually you have uh, homotopical Lie algebra. It means that you have M1 squares to zero. You have M1 that differentiates M2. So you can put M1 and three places, 
Yes. And it would be the Leibniz idea. However, you will have the following equation for one, two, three, and you may interchange them. M2, M2. You have three inputs, one output. You can also get the same operation by having M3 and M1. Okay, I'm not, I don't care about science. Uh, if you write it algebraically, you'll find out proper science. Okay, so this, uh, so this means that you have Jacobi identity up to the commutator of M1 with operation M3. It could be made an actual commutator if you will work in tensor algebra, okay? So that's the meaning of L-infinity equations. And what is good, what is important is that this L-infinity equation uh, could be nicely formalized in the supergeometry, okay? And we understand what supergeometry is. We even understand its global structure, you see? It is great that we understand the global structure because of works of Beretian, okay? We understand that it could be considered as a global object. By the way, if you wish to know how to construct Q manifolds, it's a topic of global Q, global Q manifolds. It's a topic of the special talk. But just believe that you can construct a lot of Q manifolds. And I think Chile has examples of global construction. Yes? Yes. <laughs> so uh, I, I have not uh, looked at the Shelley's paper, but please consult Shelley's paper. And uh, if I'll have a look, I will probably add some more examples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in particular, uh, one way to construct Q manifold is the following. Suppose we have a Q manifold. Then you have a locus of zero Q. It's not a point. It's, it's actually something like submanifold. So there are many models where it's submanifold. You can go here. So you can consider a, uh, a submanifold that contains this submanifold completely. And you will have a new Q manifold from the bigger Q manifold. So it is uh, the global version of the process of going to cohomology of the piece of the differential or contracting uh, uh, the acyclic complex. Okay, you know, there are French people, you see they are drinking wines and they don't like general relativity. <laughs> because general relativity was not discovered by French people. It was discovered by uh, Germans, Jews, uh, English people, etc. Okay, so you know these French people, and there was a competition between uh, French and German mathematical schools. I understand that from China, all this called West. Okay, but uh, there are some distinctions, like you see, in in the West we distinguish people from Shanghai and Beijing. They are quite different. <laughs> so, so in the similar way, you should distinguish Germans and French people. By the way, they are close relatives, both of the German tribes, etc. France actually is called uh, due to the name of Franks. Frank was a German tribe that occupied house that were living there. Okay, so uh, I omit all this, all this history. So. In the French school, that is a linear algebra, basically, and tensor algebra, there is a notion 
of contracting of a cyclic complex. So these guys consider uh, the space, super space, only as a formal disk or as, as something like this. And by contracting an acyclic complex, somehow means, I'll draw a picture. You have a cube. And in this direction, there is no cohomology. So you can make a cube into square. You are not losing anything because cohomology is a line. OK, there's some lines here. It doesn't go in vertical direction. So since Chile likes geometrization, I'll draw this picture. So these are direction in the linear space that you have in the complex. This is, say, acyclic direction. OK? And cohomology are somewhere here. So idea is that in studying the cohomology, you could contract the acyclic direction having some relations here. So this is French. By the way, this is, uh, this is a theorem of Kadeishvili. 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 And uh, he's Georgian. So Georgian has nothing to do with the Georgia in the United States. Georgia is an ancient uh, country near the Black Sea. Small, but uh, prominent. A bit closer to China, but not, uh, not that close. So Chinese people never intersect Georgian people. One has to go a bit further. So when we come to the Caspian Sea and go over, then you'll see India, and then you could intersect with Chinese people. But uh, see, Georgians do not interest. OK, so this is the Kadeshvili theory. And there are many proofs of this. And these proofs are basically called perturbative lemma. And perturbative lemma says that that if you have an L infinity structure on the space V, and then you decompose V as V. So I like to put my notation, you see? Infrared plus ultraviolet. So people mostly say that this is a cycle, uh, this is contractible complex. It means that there is homotopy. Okay. So you, you have to call it a cyclic complex and the complex that you are left with. I don't like this because uh, in physics we call this ultraviolet and this infrared. So that's uh, okay. I have to promote mathematical physics. Then, if you have L infinity structure of V, you have L infinity induced on V infrared. Basically, operation here have the following type. You consider operations of the L infinity structure, and you have actually trees with propagators that are nothing but homotopies. And the, here we have leaves that are insertions of V infrared into V. So people call it this way. And at the root, you have projection. So now there are many papers where I can read this. So people are repeatedly using this. 
-hmm. So this is called perturbative lemma or perturbative construction or whatever. Okay. So this is an act. So you can contract it. So if you have some simple L infinity algebra, like Lie algebra or, DG, or DGL, and you have something acyclic, you can contract it and get uh, L infinity operate, uh, algebra with more complicated operations. Okay? Because they contain all the operations like this. No propagator, sorry. And also something with propagate. So physicists call it integrating out massive variables. Mm -hmm. Okay? So come on. It's how physicists consider it. You, you do not need to. This is a formula. You can prove it just combinatorically. Okay? So in this linear algebra language of French people, you just quash it. Okay? Now, I, I am very happy that Philly follows Russian idea of global, of globalization. You know, globalization nowadays is a fashion. So what is the globalization of this idea? Suppose you have a big space, not linear space, but just a linear supermanifold. And suppose you can fiber it over some manifold. I call it infrared. And you know that your cohomology are here. So what are cohomology? Cohomology are zeros of the vector field, of the vector field, OK? Homological field, by the way, has zeros. OK? So actually, these, these zeros are solution to Mauro Cartan equation. Shelly, please correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. So you have solutions to Mauro Cartan equation. But you, for some reasoning, you know that uh, they are in the infrared submanifold of the total manifold, supermanifold. Then you can squash. OK? So you can use this construction to create a huge amount of interesting super manifolds, not only uh, higher operations, but also different topology. A lot of examples could be created in this way. And when Shelley would show his examples, I can bet that in one week, I'll consider, I'll find another example using this construction. That is a global version of the Kadeshvili construction. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. So, okay. So, finally, you see, in the global world, we should forget about this linear algebra structure that L infinity is a set of operations such that you write the list of conditions. This is working in special coordinate system. Yes. So we need to consider diffeomorphisms. We need to consider general relativity here. That mixes these operations, OK? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it is OK. So uh, in this way, you see the Germans from one side and the Russians from another side come to French and make a kind of a mixture of cultures. Okay. Okay. So, so I explained a bit about L infinity. So L infinity is clear, natural. We have natural operations, natural globalization. Now, what about A infinity? How to understand? So, what is first of all? What is A infinity? So, let us work together with French people. Do the same thing, but 
replace graphs by ribbon graphs. Hmm? It looks a bit like an innocent, innocent operation. Okay. But immediately, if you work with ribbon graphs, you immediately will see that Jacobi goes to associativity. Yes. Right? Yes. So, on this French level, okay, you see, no, no. instead of staying on the level of tensor algebra, you see, I'll make it more poetic. I'll call it on the French level. Okay. You see? So, on the French level, it looks Similar. However, there, there could be a question. How do you have to globalize this? What is an analog of the Q manifold? So it would be nice if this picture would, so first of all, it's an associativity equation is very important because, uh, okay, you can contract a cyclic complexes and get an infinity structure in a very similar way. It means that associativity, so associator of, of M2, M2 is Q of associate, associator. So you have homotopical associativity. Okay, this is similar. However, there is something that is not similar. So French people would be satisfied, but Russians and Germans would not be satisfied because they don't see, so German people would not see general uh, covariance. Uh, or interpretation in terms of vector fields, and the Russian people would not see uh, something like supermanifold. So what people like Kansevich say, you have an operation, mi g1 gk, with no symmetry on permutation of Q1, GK. No symmetry. Oh, they say, ah, ha. Ah. It's a um, vector field. And here they say, you need to put variables that are Commutativity free. So commutativity free means that T I T J is not related to T J T I. So what would it mean? And people say, look, these are differentiations of the of this thing that is associative algebra, algebra of free, this guy, and you say, look, this is associative uh, manifold, non-commutative. So it is not a super manifold. It is a manifold that corresponds, I mean the manifold where T's are coordinates, that corresponds to associative algebra that is not commutative at all.
So it's interesting that in order to express as to express associativity, we all we already need some object that is non-commutative manifold. So manifold where coordinates are these guys. Good. But uh, nobody had constructed a constructive theory. of associative algebraic geometry. So associative algebraic geometry means, what, what does it mean? It means to any associative ring, you associate something like a space, okay? So it is hard to work with it. You have something like formal calculus. It's not so easy to work with it. And uh, it is hard to construct examples. Still, it's possible to construct examples. So there is a desire. Is it possible to turn this associativity equation back to the world of uh, L infinity equations? You see, it looks crazy. But actually, it's not that crazy as you may think. Let me give you an example. Okay? Mm -hmm. How uh, associative spaces are, are related to L infinity. So it's, a, it's an example that everybody knows. Mm. And this example is generalized chern silence. So Slee has a Slee has a video at 10. Yeah, so I mean oh, it's, I, I watched the video later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you see, I, I, I'm sorry, Sam. I'm sorry. So okay. yeah. by the way, yeah. Sam, yeah. You, you you should tell it in advance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay, still, you see, it's science. So okay. science, so the, the time you spend on science is the time that science demands. Hmm. You see? Uh, I watched the video later. <laughs> but I want, I want to discuss it with you. So idea is, suppose you have super commutative. Mm -hmm. Associative DGA, DG algebra. Yes. A. So then you can make an L, a DGL, by not only DGL, you can make L infinity in the following way. You just tensor, I call it A. You just tensor L infinity by this A. So we know this example, why, why I call it generalized chern silence. We know this example when A is differential and acting on differential forms on some space. Then it's called generalized chern silence. Actually, it's generalized BF. We call it BF. But it's, it's like you associate the least structure to the to the to the associative algebra. I mean, the commutator. Yes. So so uh, yes, of course. So uh, so when I'm writing this, I need to say what is the commutator. What are the operations here? So operations here are the following. You take a product in A, you take a product in A, and you take an operation in L infinity. So, 
In particular, if you have Lie structure L and you have DGA like this, the elements are elements like, like this, L times omega. So everything is generated by this. So differential on L times omega is, of course, L times d omega. The commutator M2 of L times omega, L1 omega 1, L2 omega 2 is M2 L1 L2 times omega 1 multiplication omega 2. So it is okay if this algebra is not only associative but supercommutative. Okay? And uh, Chern Simon theory is an example. Yes. However, one may ask. What, what would happen if I take uh, some uh, not associative supercommutative, but something else? So it is possible to write down the construction. So understanding of this construction, one of the way to get this construction would be, suppose we have some, suppose we have some A infinity. Then you can write it as a contraction of resolvent of DGA. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you may tensor here, but to tensor it, this DGA has to be supercommutative. So there is a class of A infinity structures that have supercommutative resolvents. And uh, it is uh, one of the gaps in our paper with Sam. We didn't realize, and it's my responsibility, that you, we should take not just all A infinities, but A infinities were supercommutative resolvents. They also have some name in the theory of A infinity structure. Okay. Super commutative resolvent. Uh, also, something like or something like homotopical super commutative, or something like that. So it's so I don't okay. remember the name, and uh, there is kind of relation that uh, you can do something like a duality with it. So it's. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't remember details. Nevertheless, this is, this is an interesting way to get to get new L infinity. So here we take arbitrary L infinity and uh, very different definite A. But now, but it's not what I want to do. I want to look at the similar construction. Now I want to embed embed A infinity in L infinity. You may think, hey, come on, uh, it looks like being completely crazy. A is something like an object. L is something like derivative, okay? Am I crazy trying to embed space in the tangent space? It's very crazy idea from mathematics, from mathematical point of view. You see, what is L? L infinity. Or you may say, A and so if you look here, you may call this space, Time and here and this maybe you may call this physics. So Chern Simons is a kind of tensor product of the space-time 
and physics. So physics is in the type of the gauge group you have. Okay. The model. Okay. Yes. Yes. So Sharon Simons is actually a signal model to to the Q manifold that is uh, Lie algebra shifted by one uh, with the uh, with the Q with with this Q. Yes, exactly. So this is a space time. So now you may say, "Am I crazy? I want to embed space time in the theory of what." In the L infinity itself. But L infinity itself is the target space, it's a theory of maps of points, not even lines. It's a point. And I want to see space time appearing there. Crazy idea. It's a very crazy idea. However, it's doable. Let me tell you, let me show you some construction. Okay. So infinity is a set of operations. Okay, J. So I'm going to French. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Russians. Sorry, Germans. I understand it only in the French language. So I have these operations. Now, suppose that I run from one to k. Now, I want to consider the space C, I say C, of the dimensions C, K, and square. With coordinates T, I, alpha, beta. So alpha, beta run from one to n. Now I will construct, so she are going away exactly at this moment. Okay. Now I'll construct this vector field alpha one, alpha two. D, G1, alpha 2, alpha 3, etc. T, sorry, T, I, I2, etc. T, I, N. And here I uh, say like alpha N, beta. And here I have T star, G, beta, alpha 1. So I consider this vector field. So this is a vector field governed by operations in CK. Now, let me consider condition that V square equals to zero. So where M equals to one, it is just, a, so this T is super commute. E capital super commute. So when L equals to one, it is just L infinity. So I can just ignore these indices. However, when M goes to infinity, there is no longer any kind of symmetry between I, I's because these T's are very different. Matrix value, if you wish. So one can check that when M is going to infinity, L infinity condition for V becomes a infinity condition for M. In this way, 
we are, we embed A infinity inside L infinity. So what does it mean? It means that we can see space inside the manifold, inside target, if you wish, inside the algebra. And this is very different space. This space does not need to be commutative, OK? But we are related in this. So this construction relates non-commutative space with commutative, with supercommutative space of higher dimension. Now I am coming to the topic. I'm a, little, I'm a little confused. This is a couple embedding or actually couple A infinity with L infinity. It's like a embedding or actual duality. I'm a little bit confused. It's embedding. So for n equals to one, you do nothing. The construction is you go you go from n infinity to l infinity. From n for n equals to two, I don't know the meaning of this structure. It means that you are studying L infinity uh, fields for vector fields governed by non-commutative operations in general. Four doors are on the board. However, when n goes to infinity, where n goes to infinity, you find actually that A infinity on this big space become A infinity on the smaller space on C2K. And this is something unexpected. By the way, this is written in our paper with Professor Hu in appendix, right? So without a proof. <laughs> yes, without a proof. But, uh, but you are welcome to make a proof. So why I have this multiplication structure? Because uh, okay. this is, the, here I have GLN invariance, okay? So having this non-commutative multiplication, I have a map from non-commutative multiplication to GLM invariant object. Okay. Okay. Hi, Andrew. I have to leave now, but uh, this is a. I will probably I have some questions, but I'll probably ask you later. I sent you okay. the stuff as well on on the on. on okay. The so 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 basically, so basically, since Chile is out of time, and we were talking for for some amount of time, five. Ah, so you are talking for two hours approximately. So last time it was three hours, but still uh, I, I made, so after all, I made a point. Yes, yes. I actually made all points. Last thing, you have this equation. N infinity is A infinity. What is one over what is one over m oh. square expansion? Yes, that's what, actually the question I want to ask. Yes. But it was in the abstract of my talk that I explained. Okay. Cool. And what is non-perturbative things? And how this is related to ADC. So it's holography. Mm. So I actually claim it is holography. Because L infinity is a theory of open strings, and A infinity is a theory of closed strings. And we may ask, in which sense is a large N limit 
open strings produce closed strings. It is this. That, that's actually the question I, I just asked. I'm, I'm confused about whether they are coupled or actually embedded because the coupled uh, is similar to causal duality then to integrate out this uh, a infinite structure to get a deformed yes, yes. I understand. But uh, but this is a general idea. Then one can write out yes, yes. specific construction. Namely, you can integrate out something and uh, try to see something that looks much more like, you see, geometry induced by deep rays. But this would be a particular example of this. So main idea is that you do not need to decompose the space into the flat space and deep brains, integrate out deep brains to have another space. This, this, this does not look general. I'm sorry to say this. It could not be statement in mathematics that, uh, uh, that one space is modified to another space. The conceptual idea would be that Open strings or L infinity, whatever. You may put here uh, some representations of L infinity that already has some space in it. And then you integrate out and you have a new space. But it is just an example. So open strings in general are L infinity, period. Geometry in general is A infinity. Maybe with this uh, condition of uh, being asymptotically uh, uh, commutative, maybe not. I'm not sure. But it's A infinity. The question, how to get geometry from open strings? That's how. You have open strings. Do it. You get geometry in the large n limit. You have one over, over n square correction. It means that you don't have a infinity, but you have some corrections to a infinity. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. So strings do not actually bring you geometry. Strings bring you geometry plus one over n square corrections. Just study. And they look like semi-classical correction in Toft uh, expansion, etc. So, Shelly, yeah, I know we need to run. Do you, do you like this idea? Yeah, sure, but I, I need to think about it more. Yes, yeah. you see, you see, it's, it's hard to sell idea, you see, just. Mm -hmm. Here I'm not saying uh, just marry me because you did not have your path. So, not, so uh, in, 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 in my this incarnation, you yeah. do not have the corresponding path. So, here I am a newcomer. Yes, yes. You yes. know, the gentleman was saying. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah, great. Like, uh, Andrew, I have to leave. I really have to leave now. But uh, yeah, thanks a lot. For... See, see, sure. So, goodbye, Shirley. Thank you for, for coming. And. Uh... Yes. So far. Sam, did, did, did you want me to talk about this? Uh, oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, we can just discuss a little bit. Uh, so for finite n is really an open string uh, theory. So it's finite number of deep rays. I saw, I'm sorry to say this. Yes, for finite it's n, a, capital N. For finite n, yes, it's... It's a ribbon graph. So that is open string theory. Uh, yes. Or open string field theory. Yeah. Yes, open string field theory. Yes. Yes. For finite n, as it should be L infinity, yeah. theory of open strings connecting brains. Right. So now if you take a, a large n, n go to infinity, so then uh, we can get uh, A infinity. So A infinity yeah. is kind of geometry. Uh, Okay. Yes, as we think, a infinity is uh, geometry, right? Or, or you may say it's closed, 
string theory sector. Yes. So, uh, in, in, the, in the case, so how about the case for, we, we want to study the case for the uh, Shane Simon's matrix model. So you, 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 can, you can do the same thing. So, so any, you see, here, so you, so you can do this. If you don't like to have large M, so I don't know. So it is, it is the understanding on how to, how to, so, so you see, it is clear how to work with, so idea is, it is clear how to work with L infinity. Yes. It's yes. not clear how to work with A infinity. And this is the relation. Yes. yes. So as long as uh, you have uh, A infinity with uh, parameter N, you, you can take a limit. But it's not A infinity. When you have parameter N, it is not A infinity. It's it is not defined. Infinity, right? So, in between, yeah, n equal to one is a infinity, but you couple n one is l infinity, right? l infinity, but you can uh, replace by a ribbon graph, so that is still an open thing. Feel serious. So, if you replace it by a ribbon graph for m equals to one from super commutativity, you see that all non symmetric operations just die. So, uh, so uh, we'll have uh, L infinity. Mm. So for... Uh... So N equals to one. So in this construction, so these M's satisfy some equation. Yes. So look, take this write down L infinity equations, okay, for V. They are definitely quadratic at M. Right. So let us call these equations, I don't know. It's not, L is not a good name. Let us call them S equations. So S, M are quadratic equations on M. And you can write down, if you can write them down explicitly, quadratic equations solution to this equation is some n structure that is not known in mathematics. Well, so this uh, transimal matrix model offer such examples. You know, you have a gauging rent uh, uh, action. And this Seven. condition is a simple. I, I, yes. so, so everything is written here. This, so main statement is yes. that, that for alpha running from one to n. Right. There are these equations. Yes. Equation. Yes. What is the meaning of these equations? You cannot say. Uh, the, so if you know the meaning of this equation, then please speak up. Uh, I so thought. <laughs> I thought maybe wrong. So this uh, condition is uh, kind of uh, gauging round condition. So of course. Uh, so you see. Uh, so when you compute this thing, right. when you compute this thing, yes. you have some quadratic relation in M. However, there is also some relations among T's. Mm -hmm. So it is some relation on operation. You put two operations and there is some relation. So this is unknown quadratic. For n equals to one, it turns out that it is L infinity. For, and uh, if m uh, 
e am e, 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 non super commutative path, they just drop out. So, so you take M, abstract M here, and you super symmetrize, uh, super, sim <laughs> super symmetrize, okay? So everything that, 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 uh, that dies under super symmetrization does not appear in this equation for N equal to one. So you super symmetrize, and on the super symmetrized thing, you have an infinity. So namely, here you have not ends. Here we have M, I, how people say, super symmetrized, I one, I am small. These come here for M equal to one. And the operations, that project to zero after supersymmetrization just do not enter this equation. So it means that for some associative uh, operations, this equation for n equals to one is trivial. In particular, for commutative multiplication, Two to one, this equation seems to be empty. Because, because when you super symmetrize, you have nothing. So uh, so commutative, so commutative multiplication definitely solves this equation trivially. It's not interesting. So we, However, yes. if you take n to infinity, this equation becomes an infinity condition. Hmm. And this is not real. So what is the meaning of this equation for finite n is unclear. It is a new mathematical structure that inter interpolates between an infinity and the infinity. Mm. So maybe some of you will look into homological algebra book. People are not thinking about this, <laughs> that you can interpolate L infinity and A infinity <laughs> depending on some parameter. In some sense, N equals to infinity is kind of a classical limit. And n equals to one looks like an extreme quantum limit. If you start to speculate. So is that however, a, yes. However, here we may forget about physics at all. It's okay. pure algebra. Quadrics. Oh. So Chen Simon uh, matrix model is an example of this. I don't know. Sam, when you say something, please, please explain. Mm. So, so Chern Simons in the form, not in the form of matrix model, is, is like this. If you would like to think, to ask Chern Simons matrix model, you need to describe it. So last time we had problem in describing Chern Simons matrix model. We mm. had problem in describing this uh, this particular case of non-commutative uh, space. Right. So when you say it is, I cannot agree because I know what is. First, we need to correct the poor Italians that, uh, that made the wrong uh, work. Well, you can see this, uh, choose this T. And uh, so the problem is to determine this uh, M for the matrix. What does it mean determine this M? You see, I made a statement. This is a statement about something that I understand. Yes. If you want to make some other statement, please tell me what, what I do, 
how should I look, what should I put here, and I can try, and we can check. Yes, so uh, our problem is to uh, reconstruct transcendence. Uh, I think that this yeah. end, Sam, yeah. Yes. I think that this n is not related to the n in the in what you would like to get and how you would like to correct Italians. Okay. Well, the fact that they are called by the same name doesn't mean that they are related. Uh, you see, perhaps that transcendence can be written in this way. I have no idea. Mm. By choosing a proper uh, N. Yeah. So, you see? Yes. I think this concept has its own application. Uh, yes, but uh, that would be a but different because, problem. Because, because so it is a different problem. Yes. Yes. Uh, but, but this, you see, this so. So you said we need to understand the ADS CFT correspondence. We right. need to understand holography. Yes. So this is so I bring you the way to understand holography together with one over n square correction in the finite dimensional model where you can use any algebra you wish. Right. So, and moreover, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. So here, this vector field V is nothing but a particular case. So it is a particular case of uh, GLN invariant <coughs> vector field on C, K, N squared. Yes. So if you have C, K, and square space, the GLN acts here in an obvious way. Okay. Uh, in the transcendental matrix model, you have this uh, same space. The dimension is, is the same. What, what, what do you mean the dimension is the same? The matrix. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So here, K. So here, K. Is okay. Is uh, so here you have uh, so so the question is so in in what you call Chern Simon's matrix model, yes, the algebra has a dimension n square. Right. Here the algebra has a dimension k. Because these objects, these objects, yes. so this M belong to the CK to the power N plus one. Because we can power. Right. So there are the there are the interaction terms. Oh everything. The tensor. The tensor everything. Terms. Yes. So, so these operations, mm. so these are operations, these things are operations on the vector space CK. In the matrix model, mm. you have operations on the space C and square on matrix. You see that these two things are absolutely different. No, if you take a gauge group uh, with, uh, so this n square is like uh, the space of functions. So you can tensor with the gauge group. So that, that will give the k. Yeah. You so you explain the space. Right. Uh, that okay. We are we are looking for the space. Right. Uh, <clears throat> that is a finite dimensional algebra as a, as a vector space with dimension n square. Yes. Maybe n square times some times something. 
Окей? This theory explains the algebraic structure on the space CK. That's why these things are different. The fact that matrices are used here and there does not mean that uh, it is about the same thing. Uh, well, so uh, this I con this consider this M is the is the in interacting terms. So that is the it's everything. It's everything. This M contains both yeah. uh, M1 and M2. But in both yes. and interacting terms. Yes, but uh, transformation theory, uh, it uh, it's enough to know the interacting terms to produce a symmetric model. Then it's different because it is different because M, because M is an operation on the space CK. Yeah, that's the... The, 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 the model you considered is about operations on the space C and square. Yes. But n squared coefficient is the is the space of functions. So that that's so, the so, so the algebra is the algebra in matrix model that you consider. Yes. The vector space has dimension n squared. Yes. So the, the algebra that, that I consider here has yes. dimension k. Yes, but that's not a problem uh, because uh, n squared yes. corresponding <clears throat> to this. Uh, the space of functions. So the interacting only depend on the Lie algebra structure. I do not understand. Page algebra. Sam. Yes. I do not understand. I explained to you what I do not understand. Yes, I uh, I'm uh, trying to uh, express a transignment matrix model in terms of uh, this model. It's a kind of equivalent of formulation. So you it's not equivalent. There are different things. Yes, but we can uh, write a transignment in this form. So the basics of a transignment matrix model is a GLN invariant. You have an action which is a GLN invariant. Yes, but but in the matrix model that you study. Yes. That uh, in this non commutative theory, there was no gauge group. No, no. Gauge group. There, was just, uh, there was just non commutativity. No, gauge group is a GRN. No. In the Chern Simons uh, model that you consider on this uh, disk, oh, well, there was no GLN. That is U1 theory. You can tensor with the gauge. Okay, you want okay, but so you can tensor it, but when you tensor it, it will be another M. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> you are right. So this M and that M are different M's. Yes, yes. But uh, uh, that I think that model could be rewritten as in this form. I think. I think not. So uh, if you think yes, I think not, it is your uh, responsibility to rewrite it. Uh -huh. so, so you rewrite it and I'll check. You see? Yes. When yes. I say something yes. could not be written in this form, I do not need to give a proof of it. Yes, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so if we uh, write in this form, then we can apply uh, this result to get an infinity. You understand, but uh, I, you see, I cannot think about it because my intuition says yes. that it, it could not be written on this form. Well, we can check. Yeah. So. <laughs> so you see, so you see here my uh, thoughts. Yes. Uh, stop. Yes. Yes. Because because I cannot imagine it. Well. So when you say it could be written, it means that you can imagine it. I cannot imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If exactly. I cannot imagine something, I cannot assume that it happens. Yes, yes, we, we can uh, we can check. Uh, so, uh, so if you tell me 
just uh, consider that uh, the elephant is a fractal. Hmm. Then, and you proceed, I say, no, I cannot do it. I no. cannot imagine. So I cannot assume the elephant being as a fractal because it, uh, it doesn't come to my mind no, how no, elephant no. be a, So I cannot no. take this, uh, this assumption. No, this is a very concrete. Whether it's true or not, it can, it's a checkbook. Yes, so, so, so you see, if you tell me imagine, you see, I cannot okay. imagine this. Uh, so, 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 so uh, you see, so here my uh, contribution to this line of thought stops. Either I see a structure and then I have to shift my imagination to include this structure. Yeah. It will take time, but uh, it is doable uh, it's, uh, because it's I am part of the competition. Yeah. I can imagine any existing structure, no. but but I cannot imagine the conjecture. No, no, it's uh, we can verify this. So okay, so, so but but so Sam, if you verify this yeah. or or give some example, so why? Yes. Now the thing is that uh, we are working on this uh, reconstructing space of uh, transactional matrix model. It, it's yeah. another stuff. Yes. Yes. So, yes. So, so we are trying. So we are trying to reconstruct the space of Chern Simon's matrix model in the way how. So we are trying to correct Italians. We uh, so the, the, there was a project how to yes. how to write uh, formal uh, the round calculus for yeah. uh, the very definite algebra. Right. They are, we are working on that problem. I thought this can solve this problem. So, no. Okay, so if we can, if we can rewrite uh, that matrix model in this form, it solves the problem. If we... uh, but I don't think that we can rewrite. Okay, you asked me. You asked me to explain this. Okay. As far as I understand. So if not, so I uh, I followed your order. You uh, asked me to explain this. I explained this. Uh, but uh, but if you ask me to use this. To do something, to use this to do something else, I say I don't know how to do it. Okay, okay. So that uh, either this will be a different problem or this can solve that problem. We don't know. I, I think we can check. So you see, I cannot check because I don't have an idea how to compare, what to substitute where. No, if matrix, you have. To so see, matrix model, essence of matrix model is the GRN invariant of a function. Yes, but 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 uh, somehow the matrix uh, Chern Simons. Yes. Okay. So matrix Chern Simons has GLM that is kind of replacement of the non-commutative replacement of diffeomorphisms, yes. and uh, yes. and but in the formulas I don't see this uh, uh, GLM. But this model is also GLM invariant. So yes. You see, not not everything that is G lemon variant is the same. Well, <laughs> we can rewrite in this form the trans. So Sam, I don't yeah. Sam, please, please. So Sam, Sam now yeah, yeah. you That's see, why now, I, now, 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 now it's your turn to yes. do this. Yes, yes. That's why uh, I way, think this could be done. By the way, yeah. even even if it could not be written this way, yeah. I don't think that you should not uh, study this correspondence this correspondence because uh, it is related to Feynman to Feynman geometry ideas of our paper yes yes of course of course so this uh, correspondence is uh, is kind of realization so I, of I think that this is uh, that the, the, these are foundations of holography yes yes so it's a uh, this uh, itself is kind of uh, interesting, but um, we needed to uh, clarify. I thought this solved the problem, but uh, we see. I think uh, I think we can, we should deal with this. Uh, okay, matrix with this uh, algebra of n by n matrices plus uh, so. So you posed a very definite problem. Yes. Consider GLM. So your problem could be formulated like this. Consider GLM. 
right, uh, write a differential calculus for it. Right. First piece. Second piece. Uh, consider very special limit. And going to infinity, theta scales like this, and look what happened from the calculus in this particular limit. Right. Uh, uh, that, so this problem I understand, and I understand how to approach to it. First, right. first uh, writing formal differential calculus for uh, GLM. By the way, it's uh, it's a thing that everybody would do, say in twenty years uh, in the high school. <laughs> so when when progress would be done, you see it would move to high school. Okay, mm. then after this is done, a clear example studied, we can look at part, at uh, interesting particular limits, namely to the non-commutative stuff. Namely, we, we would like to see how disk with a boundary appears. Because yeah. naively, you are absolutely right. If you take this, if we take this limit, the naive spectrum of the problem is, of course, points on the disk. Here I completely agree. So the question that we put is the following: there are non-commutative systems but associative such that there would be spectrum would be spectrum uh, of course they don't have spectrum because they are non commutative but there but there would be spectrum is a manifold with a boundary so from the existence of uh, formal differential calculus uh, on this non commutative space we can deduce some consequence of the limiting theory. What are these consequences? Mm. So this is a well-defined problem. Right. And uh, the first thing we need to do is to punish Italians for writing wrong formulas. Mm. And also not only punish Italians, but, but also punish uh, referees who allow them to publish it. OK, so we publish this two group of people. Well, we okay. have to make it uh, mathematically make sense. Um, what are, so you see, we, we, I don't understand this. We need to make, we need to write correct formulas. Right. So they are like, you see, I don't understand in which sense uh, writing correct formulas means making mathematical sense. So formulas about matrices could be either correct or not correct. Uh -huh. Formulas about functional integrals would uh, mean if we understand the functional integral in this way or in that way, etc. Yeah, uh, but, but when you are writing formulas about n by n matrices, these formulas could be either correct or wrong. So it right? is, uh, physics is like an experiment, doing an experiment. So we don't know the structure of mathematics. So you see, uh, but uh, maybe they don't know the structure of mathematics, but yeah. they should check if d square is zero or not. Actually, they, they don't consider this drum at all. OK, so, so they the, don't consider the drum. Yes. Like OK, so, 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 so they wrote something. Right. So it's easy to write this something. Everybody could say that uh, if you have an algebra of n by n matrices, then let us consider very definite differentiations. Yes. You write a matrix, say commutator with this matrix. You write another matrix, say commutator with this matrix. Then uh, you have two differentiations. Then the question is, what you do then? So uh, perhaps this d square equals zero up to homotopy. So you need to modify this. Uh, Sorry, homotopy of what? Uh, of you see, when you say homotopy, you need some differential. I don't see any other ah, differential. Yes. So 
That, that's true, that we need to construct this uh, homotopy. Uh, how can we construct homotopy? Before constructing homotopy, we need to have an extra differential. Yes. So homotopy... Uh, what is, comes... Before homotopy, what is the extra differential? How yes. can you construct homotopy without having differential? Uh, you, you see, uh, this matrix is a space of functions. So yes. you can... Uh, for uh, extra, you have a large matrix. You can pro project out this large matrix exponent component. Sam. Yes. Uh, Sam. So in order to do something, yes. In order to consider homotopy, we need a differential. Because when you say matrix are projected in some matrices, and you want to consider it, it's a homotopy. It means that you assume that uh, that you have some differential associated to filtration. Yes. This I understand, but uh, there are some details that are needed. Yes. It's also an old question that I have. Uh, how suppose you have a filtration? How to write down the formal complex? It such that spectral sequence associated to filtration would be a spectral sequence associated to the double complex. Yes. Well, how much uh, I know can... this question for 20 years, but I was lazy to solve it. Oh, yeah. So if you know the solution, please show me. Because mm -hmm. when you say change in size of the matrix is homotopy, you need to say in which sense. Yes, you have both a projection and an inclusion. So I guess using this, you can construct the homotopy. It is not enough because, because projection and inclusion is not enough to have a homotopy. You also need a differential. Okay. So it's clear. So suppose you have two vector space, one vector space inside another vector space. Yes. You want to say there is a homotopy. Just the composition of vector space in the sum of two doesn't mean that uh, you have a homotopy that you can contract one of the vector space. What you actually need, what you actually need is a complex such that this decomposition is a decomposition of complexes and uh, you need homotopy of what you are contracting. Okay. So when you say that uh, contraction the matrix is a homotopy, I would like to understand what does it really mean? And you know what does it mean mathematically to have a homotopy for vector space? Yes, yes, yes. You so need uh, you need a differential on some of the complexes. So it's mm -hmm. it's a definition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you mean something else, well, I think uh, similar things was done by uh, Danny Sullivan in his work. You said, I don't understand what does it mean, similar things. I mean homotopy, to construct a homotopy. So you see, uh, so you see, it is very easy, so. Yes, you we, see. Should, uh, we should look so, at uh, So Danny Sullivan, of course, constructed homotopy in the composition of complexes. Right. However, if you have uh, matrices of this size and matrices of that size, I'd like to understand uh, the complex. Yes. So it's a similar question, so, same question, but a different uh, context. <clears throat> yes. So so what you so what you are actually saying basically is mm. that you need to construct a complex such that changing the size of the matrix under proper inclusion uh, is a homotopy. So we need the complex, the differential operator, so something like a cone in uh, homotopical algebra. Right. right. Yes, but, uh, but uh, you see, in uh, topology, people say that shrinking a figure is a homotopy, but they described what they meant by homotopy. Right. By homotopy, they, they meant this map yes. to, <coughs> to the deformation parameter. Okay. And later on, they constructed differential forms on the deformation parameter. Mm -hmm. And finally, they managed to write it in algebraic topology 
in algebraic terms, not in terms of continuous maps. This I understand. <clears throat> now you want three, you now you want the notion of three integral <coughs> of matrix. Yes. Good. It means what you want. You want to say that n square matrix embedded into n plus one square matrix. Right. Here I have inclusion. <laughs> I also have, but it's not what I'm going to shrink. I'm going to shrink the complement. So actually, you want to say that matrices of this form, they form a vector space right. of the dimension something like 4M. Yes. So you want to shrink these matrices inside these matrices. Right. So you include these matrices into these matrices. Okay. <laughs> so, and you know exactly how you include it. So, and of course you have, so here you have inclusion. Here you have the exact sequence. So <clears throat> you want to shrink this. So you want to write cone over this. So you need to construct a complex where this is at one degree, this is in another degree. Here we have inclusion. You may consider this is a differential, this is a differential. Here we have a complex. Do you want, do you mean this? Yes, yes. So this short sequence could be considered as a differential. Now, there is something that you could shrink in this complex. This thing has image here, and they form uh, a cyclic complex. Yes. So you can shrink this complex, and you'll be left with this. So, uh, so, and you want to formalize this notion, and then you want to say this is algebraic something. So it's very trivial. <clears throat> but then you would like to say, let us take the large and limit <clears throat> and see how this homotopy, that is very trivial on the level of, uh, I don't know, of vector spaces becomes the shrinking in uh, differential geometric limit. This I understand. Mm. So, so what you are asking me or, or everybody to do is to consider your favorite disk and consider it shrinking as an algebraic homotopy with respect to some uh, differential. So it is doable. This is doable. This I understand. Okay. I see. Okay. Why why cannot you formulate So this way, perhaps we can cure that problem. I mean, without a homotopy, is not a complete theory. It's so, but you see, but you see, when you say you want to do it with homotopy, you have to start with a DGA. Yes. So at least for some m, it should be a DGA, and now you actually have a homotopy of something uh, that is not DGA. So. So it would be DGA for any infinity, but I cannot shrink from infinity. Right. So uh, what to do? 
I need to construct this homotopy, not thinking about n to infinity limit. Yes. So uh, okay. So at least I, at least now I understand your problem. You want to understand this change from m to n plus one, or vice versa, as a homotopy somehow. Consider the limit where m goes to infinity, theta goes to zero, such that something happens. Okay. Right. And. Uh, and have and construct non commutative generalization of the traditional homotopy in the theory of uh, smooth maps. Right. This, this I understand. Why you are not saying it this way? Well, <laughs> you see, I have problem in understanding your idea. Okay, yes. So without the homotopy, it cannot uh, complete the work. You see, we, but what is incomplete? We cannot start. You cannot we agree. need to have we need to have differential graded or a infinity or something to start with. Right, right. Italian construction, Italian construction. Yes. So okay, we need to have d that squares to zero. Right. Or we need to work out this model. Yes. Okay. Of uh, of uh, of of homotopy, but uh, so we need to enlarge the complex. Write down differential, understand the projection on this n plus one state, state as, as something exact. Yes. <laughs> but okay. by the way, uh, by the way, in this way, you you may say that. Any projection is exact. So, okay, okay. I think I understand what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So in this way, in this way, you can cut any hole. In this way, you can get not only disk, but many other things. <laughs> yes, they also propose. So, uh, uh, you see, because because you have a phase space. Right. In this way, you can cut out uh, some holes, hmm. quantum holes, approximate holes. Then you take n to infinity such that n times theta is finite limit, and uh, you would get a disk with several uh, holes cut out. Right. This I also understand. Yeah. But uh, you, but uh, to do this, we, we should not just Say for Italians that this square is zero, not zero. We need this complex. Yes, yes. Extra complex. Okay, now I got your idea. Yes, yes. We, we need to we need to construct a complex such that projector is a homotopy. Yes. So so it is so it is a problem in uh, in linear algebra. Enlarge the complex such that a projector to the vector space is a homotopy. So how to enlarge the complex such that? Right. OK. Now we got a problem clear, yes. So we should think about this, yeah. OK. OK. Very good. So so we have not got a, comp a problem clear. We uh, someone you see, <laughs> someone has to sit down, construct complex homotopy, etc. Yes, yes. So you are like a general saying, construct homotopy. Uh, yes. Well, yeah, you say yes. Uh, I think uh, uh, Danny Sullivan did similar things for the lattice model. Perhaps. Yes, I need to check. Okay. I cannot uh, see when you say similar things. Uh, it will be better if you say that Dennis Sullivan at page such and such, yes, in the formula <laughs> such and such, has yes. something similar. Yes. Because Dennis Sullivan, uh, I don't think, ah, uh, whether he has non commutative algebra. No, he's uh, okay. working on a lattice model. 
so generalized work of uh, Whitney. So that's a, that is a, a, a different uh, example, the lattice. Okay, so Sam, uh, why should I look for the contraction of the complex to lattice uh, while we don't have a lattice and have something different? Uh, well, I think, uh, I mean, the similar things uh, was confirmed. What do you mean similar? Sim similar in which sense? Uh, in the, sense of contraction of the subcomplex, we know how to contract how to contract the subcomplex. We didn't need to yes. go to Dennis Taylor. So no, for the, for Dennis Sullivan, you go from one lattice to a final lattice. You want to see the relations. So for us, it's a matrix to a large matrix. But uh, he, when he goes to a final lattice. He changes it, uh, uh, you see, significantly, no, and no. in our way, and, and, and we want, yes. uh, and we and we want slight changes. They are very different. Uh, no. This homotopy and uh, uh, renormalization homotopy seems to be very different for me. Well, no, if you go to a, a matrix to a larger matrix, so the difference of this component are the functions of a higher degree. So they give a finer, it's, it's a- okay, so, so, okay, I don't know how to use uh, uh, making uh, lattice smaller, even uh, if uh, I wrote a paper, okay, not I, uh, Mnyov wrote a paper on making lattice smaller. And we also had a paper on barycentric decomposition of lattices yes. with the gradients of Lysov, et cetera. Yes, so Danny Sullivan comes from this <clears throat> homotopy. Why should I look at Danny Sullivan while I have my own paper on this subject? <laughs> OK. Because, because he is a famous professor. I, so <laughs> is there any other reason? Yes. Why I should look at Dennis Sullivan while uh, I did it myself. Okay, perhaps you did similar things. Yeah. Uh, you see, I did it, you see, yeah. I did it, we published it as a preprint of the, of the uh -huh. Schrodinger University with gradients of Lysov and Lysov. And uh, we were studying orthomorphic uh, A infinity structures. Why should I look to Dennis Sullivan while I am having my own uh, paper on that subject? Okay, you can, perhaps you can share your paper as well. Yes, yes, yeah. I can share my paper. Yes. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, uh, so... Yes. So, so see you. Okay, see you. So I think uh, we have more than three hours already. So we have okay. now to uh, to absolve. No, it's, no, no, no. It's it's exact three hours of uh, work because okay. we start working yeah. not exactly uh, at uh, eight. Yes. I'm going at this time. Right. So three hours, it's a good time, a good working time. Yes. So. Okay, very good. So uh, by the way, may I ask Dong Heng? Yes. So uh, I, I sent okay, you my, okay. uh, I sent you my uh, uh, presentation and you have not replied. Your presentation? Okay. Uh, so uh, maybe, uh, maybe I haven't sent. Because uh, yeah, yes, you see, yeah. because as a professor, uh, I used to be absent-minded. So it's a necessary condition uh, that you are a real professor. You have to be absent-minded. You uh, you are absent-minded because uh, it means that as a professor you work hard. You spend all resources on, on your brain uh, to science, and you have no time to remember if you send something or not. So if I send it to you. Okay. So then, uh, then uh, I, I should. It's, it's reasonable for me to ask, what do you think about? It? If you have not read it, then please read it, 
at some moment to tell me not now. I'm just uh, using this occasion that we meet to ask, have you seen this? No, you should not read it right now. It's uh, so if if you I, happen not, I should have read it a little bit. Um, but I'm not but very familiar discuss. with the concept of uh, a infinity. We uh, should you... not this. We maybe should not discuss it right now. So okay, if you okay. read it, and you have questions, you may ask questions. I I need time to digest. Uh, okay. So you see, but the only thing is, when I'm sending some letter, I want to get some kind of response. So like, you received it, uh, you have questions, or you are studying or something. Okay? Okay, okay. Uh, and Good. also, uh, Ye Hao, yeah. you give a very uh, nice talk uh, last time. But many things yes. we uh, couldn't understand uh, to listen once. <laughs> yes, do you have a presentation or something or notes or whatever uh, you have? I didn't uh, recall uh, Yehaw's talk last night. Yeah. So maybe Yehaw can explain uh, again. Uh, of this but, not, but, 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 but not right now. Not right now. Okay, of course. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. So, so we can record, and if you have a presentation or something written, please share it with us. Yeah, um, I, I think I already share with you my notes. I sent it to your the, in the Dropbox um, by email. Uh, by email, okay. Yes. So, so it means that uh, somehow I overlooked. Okay. So it means that when your talk would be announced next time, I will be well prepared. I will study these notes in advance. So I'll know something and I'll ask questions. Because you know, in order to understand something, you need to know it. <laughs> but in order to need to, in order to know it, you need to understand. So the only way out is to do it iterations. Okay. So maybe uh, next time Yeho can give a talk again on this. Uh, let me check my calendar. Okay. Yes, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So next uh, Wednesday, Yeho will uh, give a talk. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very good. So what other things we are, we have to work and need some time time to work out? <laughs> the other yes, thing. yes. So it, it so it'll be nice to announce the seminars in advance. Yes. Such yes. that at least abstract could be sent in advance, yes. such that people would know what uh, they will hear and so that they could prepare a bit. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. So very good. So maybe that's all for today. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank okay. you. So see you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye.